Now, last week, we started on our series of tips on how to acquire property. So today, we're going to be talking more about buying your first home. Now, it's the biggest financial obligation you can make, and it's going to take a lot of financial discipline to save up enough money for the down payment. So in today's episode, we want to find out how we can achieve this financial goal by setting a monthly budget. To walk us through the process, today we have with us in the studio a certified financial planner from the Financial Planning Association of Malaysia, Kevin Neo. Hi Kevin, thank you Hi, so good. much for joining good us. Good evening. Good evening. Now, um, so when we're talking about saving money to buy your first home, uh, we'd like to take a look at the demographic of our viewers. So okay. we'll give you a case study cool. of someone who is uh, just starting in their career and they want to buy their first home. So let's assume this person is 25 years old. Okay. They earn 3,500 ringgit, which is the typical uh, of young. Demograph yeah, young working adult in Malaysia. So he takes the MRT to work and he wants to buy a home worth 300,000 ringgit. 300,000, okay. Okay, in the Klang Valley. So, what sort of monthly budget should this person come up with? Okay, uh, Azara, before we, I answer you the question, I would like to uh, address what is financial planning. Mm -hmm. Okay, so financial planning is the process that helps us to make sensible decisions about our money mm -hmm. so that we can pursue our life goals. Yeah. All right, having said that, um, you see, Normally, we think that you need to have savings, then only you can uh, have the financial muscle to pursue your life goals. Mm. But usually people say, I don't have savings. How mm. do I even think about that? So instead of uh, fixing your budget, like how many percent of your income spent for transport, how many percent on food, mm. I would uh, give another uh, method. That is that uh, when you receive your income, mm -hmm. you should consider to set aside a portion of money for rainy days, that is for emergency. Mm -hmm. And then another portion is for your insurance, mm -hmm. all right, to cover any unexpected or unforeseen events mm -hmm. that could disrupt your plannings. Okay. Then you set a, a third portion to allow you to save up to pursue your life goals. Mm -hmm. Then whatever that is still balanced, then mm -hmm. you make plans with it for your lifestyle. Okay. So that you have less limitation, less restriction and more yeah. freedom to pursue your own kind of lifestyle based mm. on whatever is left. Okay. Okay, so um, if this person is uh, earning about 3,500 ringgit per month, which is something that is faced by a lot of people these days, that's a typical demographic in Malaysia, especially for a young working adult earning mm. only about 3,000 to 3,005. So how should this person start in saving their money? Uh, so the method that I was proposing just now was that when you get your money, you transfer one portion that you is meant to for you to save for your life goals. Mm -hmm. That is in this case, let's say to buy a house, a you house. need to prepare down payment. Yeah. So before you even get to spend that money, mm -hmm. first transfer that money into another savings account, mm -hmm. which your mind will then forget about you having that money. Okay. All right. So mm -hmm. you save it. So assuming this person wants to buy a house uh, in three years mm. for a three hundred thousand house, he or she may have to save, uh, based on three thousand five gross income, mm -hmm. may have to save about twenty five percent of the gross income mm. into that separate account. Then, uh, if all goes well, hopefully mm. by end of year three, this person will have enough uh, initial fund to pay for the property purchase. Okay, but 25% is quite a big amount to take out. It is out. a big amount. So this, uh, after you set aside 25%, mm -hmm. and then the other make provision for rainy days and insurance and other things, mm. and you find that the balance is not enough for you to live a reasonable lifestyle as a young, young person. Yeah. So in that case, you have no choice but to stretch your goal into instead of three years, maybe four years. Okay, I see.